good morning. Today I'm in E17 in Walthamstow outside the Walthamstow Pump House Museum, which is an amazing museum which has a lot to show. Let's go inside it. But before we get to any other parts of the museum, first up are the two 1967 tube stock carriages, one of which is refurbished and the other non-refurbished, which can be found as soon as you enter the museum. All right, so I'm inside the old 1967 tube stock carriage, which would be used on the Victoria Line, and this one is refurbished. And as it's here in this museum, there's quite a lot to it. This tube stock, of course, had a different maquette pattern than the one seen on the 2009 tube stock, as well as a different seating layout. But the most noticeable things on this particular carriage here at this museum is it has a fictitious tube map which is used for when film producers who use this carriage as part of films don't get a license from TfL to use the actual tube map. Then there is also a roundel which is not the actual London Underground roundel but instead one which uses a completely different colour scheme and font which I'm sure is in Johnston. There's also some notes for commuters and passengers in the advertisement panels. And of course, I seized the opportunity on that day and pretended to actually be aboard a tube carriage while listening to music. The next part of the Pump House Museum is, of course, the original pumping station, which gives the museum its name and houses two Victorian steam pumps which were used for Walthamstow sewage network for decades. The pumping engines run at 12 noon and 2 p.m. so you can go and watch them while being given fascinating information by a volunteer who is an expert on the history of the pump house and engines. All right, so just outside the pump house, here we have an amazing representation in model railway form uh, of the Liverpool Street to Chingford branch, but this wasn't back uh, in the times when London Overground services started. This was uh, when national rail services ran here, so before London Overground times. And it's really amazing to look at it and see and compare uh, this railway from back then to what it looks like now. On this model railway, there is a clear representation of this part of London, including the bustling streets outside Chinkford Station and Walthamstow Marshes. And even though these modern trains didn't run back then, it's essential to have both a HS1 and intercity train on any model railway. They just look great. This project is still undergoing development though, but you can still take a look at it. Outside the boiler room, there's also a Victoria Line history display featuring old leaflets and documents and even a double-decker bus promoting the opening of the new Victoria Line. And of course, the last part of the museum is the fire station, in which you can see a vast collection of fire equipment and miniatures from as far as 1888. This fire truck, designed for putting out forest fires, can be driven from both sides, and there are only a few of these models left in the entire world, one of them being here at the museum, and probably what all you fire truck fans out there have been waiting for, the Dennis fire truck. There are only two of these models left in the UK, one in Sheffield and the other here in Walthamstow. This truck has been featured in many films such as Casualty, The Bill, Ruth Rental, Bugs and many others, making this a very iconic engine. The wonderful volunteer there will give you an entire list of films in which this famous fire engines were featured. And as a person who spent many years of his life serving the public in the fire brigade, I bet you can ask him any question related to the fire brigade and he will give you an answer. If you speak with him, you'll soon find out that there is a huge difference in how firemen carried out emergency rescues back then when he was working as a fireman and how emergency rescues are carried out now. And now, back to the tube carriages. Cab. 
outside. Okay. Hi, Kevin. Hello. Uh, so, could you explain to us the controls here inside the cab? Sure. So, um, well, this is one of two cab types. You had the main cab and the secondary cab, which was in between different car units. And these would have been primarily used for emergencies by staff members of London Underground. And the controls in them are limited, but somewhat similar to a main cab. This side here is your lights and some of yeah lights and heaters primarily and part of your braking system. On the other side, on the left hand side opposite, were sort of the main controls in an emergency where you would have had a key to actually access all the controls. Let's flip down seat. You flip down with the seat. Well this is part of your driving control and um would have this is what they call the dead man's handle where if you get somebody actually driving and operating the train there would be of course access to all of the sections but without the key in place you can't and of course it's called the dead man's handle because mm -hmm. if you always have to keep your hand on it and if the for whatever reason the driver's hand came off yeah. there would have been a spring system where you can see it moves it would have um, sprung up and essentially the train would have come to a stop because that's sort of a safety feature to make sure that drivers concentrating if it was in manual operation. You have actually an emergency kit down here which has a stair or a pair of steps and yeah. flags. So if so if the tube train got stuck in a tunnel, they'd get down probably. Pretty much, yeah. That would be part of your emergency kit. It would have been in any of these sort of cars. And um this would have been part of the um emergency system for the tracks actually. Going inside, through the carriage. Kevin's got a key, what's this key? For? Well this is only an adjustable spanner but it's to access the special square taper that driver would use to get in. Thank you. Yeah but in this train is it true that you can uh, control the door, so you can make them open and close. Uh, it is true, yeah. You look on both sides, you've got your doors open and closed. And clockwise, on. now you press two buttons. And that goes. Okay, so I'm going inside the train, which is the non refurbished train. Here we have some major differences, the old seat maquette pattern, strap hangers which you can't see anywhere on the underground anymore. You can see some old tube maps which are very Harry Beck style, uh, some old uh, armrests, red armrests, and here of course an um, information board uh, on which you can read a bit about the trains. So how long have you had this train for? Oh, it's been here on this site of the museum for more or less 20 years, maybe 25. And when did you begin refurbishing it? Well, this was only actually maybe five years ago, in 2018. Um, I was only just a new volunteer here and that was the first job for me and my dad because they had just moved this because we had lost a portion of our site for redevelopment and this had been moved here and they were after people to restore it so we were sort of freshly recruited if you want to put it that way and put to work here. Okay and what happened to this train that made it so damaged? Well in its lifetime well of course this is the 16th one ever made number 3016 during its lifetime it uh, had a crash at a depot, I think, and it crashed into a set of buffers from the driver's end. This was maybe in the 1990s. It was just before the refurbishment of all of the fleet of 67 stock, as we can see with the other one. It's got a blue interior, this has red. And what it was, they put it out of service. It was too damaged to be repaired. And they actually used it, the fire brigade used to use it as a practicing um, unit. But training for rescuing trapped people and all that sort of thing somewhere in a depot I think and then the museum got it through some sort of means 
and it sat on our site for a long, long while, not really doing much, just sort of sitting in a corner with the damaged front end until about the late 2017 when we had to reshuffle what we had and get rid of a lot of our fleet of buses and trains and whatnot on the other end of our site. When that was uh, removed for redevelopment. So your site was very much uh, um, made much smaller because of that, which is quite sad because I would have loved to see uh, all those other vehicles. But how long did it take you to... Is it is this a work in progress? Are you still continuing fixing this? Or is it pretty much all that you will be doing? Well, a lot of the cosmetic work is, I guess you can say, has been done. But what we're still looking for is window parts. Because, um, of course, the 67 something, there's not much left of it. There's only a few units of it, including these two. And we're just really after the interior window frames and parts and then the interior will pretty much be complete other than the floor, which is still a work in progress. Okay, and how do you feel it's, it's looking right now? It looks wonderful compared to what it did when we first started. I'm sure, I'm sure. A lot of the panelling was missing. We, we had a mountain of spare parts given to us by TfL and that, London that, Underground. That's, that's very nice. It was, yeah, but they'd been sitting around for 20 years. So they were filthy, dirty, uh, oxidized all sorts of stuff so we had to clean a lot of it and you enjoy volunteering here yeah i do uh, it's given me actually a lot of engineering and hands-on work experience and i'm sure it's very nice looking at this carriage every single day knowing that you and your dad were the ones who fixed it well yeah it is i mean when i walk past it i sort of just every now and again glance at it and i think back to when i when i was four or five years ago working on the thing wow. that's my first task that must feel nice. Thanks. Thanks for speaking with me. You're very welcome. And there we have it. This is the Walthamstow Pump House Museum, which has a lot to show uh, and to offer when you come here. Do come here. You'll have a great day. Please press subscribe and like, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Bye-bye.